You are listening to Salty Believer Unscripted. This is Salty Believer Unscripted. I'm Josiah Walker. I'm Brian Catherman. And today I want to talk about pastors. That's okay. what this podcast is about, right? Yeah, this pastors, ministry. Is about ministry, Christian things. Does this have so, what's our anyway? Who pastors knows? Pastors today. Okay. Well, so the other day I have I subscribed to AGTV. And I was watching one, that, I think it was one. They don't age. sponsor us, by the they way. They don't, that was but they're not, more than welcome to. That was but, not a place. Yeah, if they want to sponsor us, that was not a placement ad. I don't want to derail us, but I was watching that. And they, some, I don't know what it was, but some movie on there was talking about how, like, Kenneth Copeland's getting ready to retire, and he's kind of passing the torch to Todd White a little bit. And, and that's the prosperity gospel side and stuff of things. I can't believe they even have those guys on there. I, I wow. Yeah, they were, they were just talking about the prosperity gospel and stuff. But it got me thinking about... Big churches and, and churches that are built around huge personalities. Right. You know, I, I've noticed that John MacArthur's had a lot of health issues lately. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, he's got to be getting ready to retire. Isn't he like 80-something? I don't um, know, but he's put, put like 60 years of his life into really right. dedicated ministry, and he's got to be getting up there. And I know that church has really grown since he took it over. I mean, I, when he started yeah, there, it, it was wasn't, small you know. Enough, yeah. Some of that social media and stuff. And there's other people, you know, celebrity televangelist type people. Uh, David Jeremiah, is he kind of getting ready to retire? And he's up there in age. He's getting John up there John Piper in age. retired a while back. John Piper just retired. Alistair Begg's got to be getting yeah, somewhere up right? there, right? He's, you know. I don't know. I don't know. So what do you do if, if you have a large church or a church is... Mark Dever, he's going to want to retire at some point. Right. What do you do if a church has kind of grown under a pastor's leadership or become huge and, and that pastor, his time is starting to end? Like, is the church going to end up shrinking because he leaves or, you know, how, what does that mm. look like? What do you do? When, okay. Well, you said a few things that I think we need to dissect this into different categories. Sure. So you, the first thing you said is, what do you do when the church is built around yeah. the celebrity? Let's start okay, because yeah. some of these churches they grew, right? But they weren't built around the celebrity, so they might have better systems in place, or they might be. Yeah. But let's. I'm going to use an example of a church built around a celebrity that uh, that I followed from obscurity to I didn't follow all the way into the implosion. I gave up before that. But okay. Uh, but Mark Driscoll, oh, and Mars, yeah. Mars Hill, right? Sure. They built that whole thing was kind of built around his. With his uh, persona a little bit. Yeah, his bigger, larger-than-life thing is preaching. You know, because that's when you start getting the, the screen things, and then the campus pastors are kind of cronies of that thing, or whatever it is, and it has a personality that when you say Mars Hill... I mean, you person, only think Driscoll. You think Mark Driscoll. You don't think of the church. You don't think of the rest of the people, yeah. the Bride of Christ. You think of that big personality, right. which which is the case with some of these churches, but I, but... The funny thing is, a lot of these churches, if I were to, which I think is a good thing, if I were to throw some, if I were to throw the the pastor's name out, you might not even know the name of the church. Sure, I mean like David Platt, I can never remember the name of his church. Right. Uh, I don't know. Um, I was just gonna say, um, Capital is Mark Dever. Yeah. But uh, John Piper. If you were to ask people, I think it was something. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. But the only reason I know that is because I've watched a lot of John Piper. Because he has some other ministry stuff, right? right? So you would immediately go to Design. But Matt Chandler is the village church. The village. So you You don't immediately jump to something with Chandler, but like with um, with Alistair Begg, you're not thinking Uh, of the church, right? You're thinking of his other ministries, right? Right. Church for life, right? So that maybe there are other ministries built around them, but maybe the church isn't as much. Hard to say. But when you said stuff like. Mars Hill, it was Mark Driscoll. 100%. I mean, nobody even questioned. And they had so, campus pastors. They had different locations. Multiple all Mark, churches. Right? Yeah. And, and so, that was really evident when the thing imploded. Right. Like, And it was all intrinsically tied to Mark. They couldn't mm-hmm. get out from underneath it. Sure. And so sometimes you build it around a personality. And right. church plants could really fall victim to this. I'm, I'm glad we've worked hard not to get into this. But like, even the internal systems are built around that personality. And even right. the... The various stuff, right? So um, some churches, you know, like the the lead pastor's names on the property or something. Right. I don't, sure. You know, whatever. <laughs> but, but when you build around that personality, the personality is the anchor on it. And when the personality right. is gone, it, it's nearly impossible to fix it. So so let's say that person dies or... or I mean, that moral failure is one thing because that sounds like that kind of led to a lot of corruption in the right, Marty's right, situation. Right. But let's just say that... Um, John MacArthur gets ready to retire or whatever. I mean, he built that church up. Is it guaranteed to just shrink because no, well, he's gone? I don't. I don't think that that. Ch- while that church depends on his personality right now, 
I don't think the church was built around his personality. So let's imagine like a church plant that's built around a famous guy. Sure. Famous guy leverages his fame uh, in whatever right. way to plant a church. To get resources. Yeah, yeah. tons of re- And then all of a sudden it's, it's like famous. Like Greer maybe? Famous guy's church. He's famous. Right, but he's not, yeah. I mean, he's not planting a church. But, right. So uh, instead of a guy coming up through a church where the right. church comes up with him, right? Yeah. Like, so, so some of those folks... With John MacArthur, they've been with him since he got hired there. Right. Right? And some of those, they've, they've grown with him. He's no. grown with them. He's shepherded them. That's different than we got a famous guy, we're building a church around That's him. a great point because I know an evangelist, famous guy type of person who is starting a church, and it looks like it's really built around him and who he is. Yeah, right? So, okay. So, there's, so that's why I mean there's two categories. Right, I get that's that. the church that's built around the famous right. guy. Right. Right? And, he, and things implode, and the famous guy goes somewhere else, starts over, does right. something else. Okay, but now let's take... I don't know all of John MacArthur's history, but John Piper or these guys pastored in the same church beg. forever, yeah. right? Right, and nobody knew who they were when they started well, pastoring in those churches for yeah. the most part. Okay, so the, they've grown up with the church, and the ministry has really exploded. Right, if they've put mechanisms in place in the church, the church will do fine. Now the world, so the world all looks in on these churches, and I feel right. bad for these churches, like right. they're like. On some level, all these people come and listen to the sermon, but they're not connected. They're not plugged in. They're not part of that faith family. And hopefully those individuals, hopefully John MacArthur and Alistair Begg and all these people are pouring into that congregation, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Kevin DeYoung, um, you know, you hope that he's, he's pouring into the congregation. The congregation knows him. And he's pouring into the others who are ministering. So, for example... Um, you know, I think when John Piper retired, there was a transition plan right. and whatever. Uh, when you see, like, I mean, Kevin DeYoung is not old and moving on no. soon. But you can tell there's a number of other guys there because when you, if you tune in from outside, if you're an outside right. observer into the church, you're seeing different people preach sure. at the evening thing and then sometimes a morning thing or whatever. And you kind of go, when you're an outsider, and I'll just confess, it's like, oh, I don't know who this guy is, so whatever. So then you just turn it off, then right? Then you turn it off, right? What if it's a faithful dude? Okay. Like <laughs> it could be. And sometimes I listen. I really do. And I've learned a lot from like, wow, these guys are good. But obviously, the church knows who those people right. are. The church is being cared for those people. And so, in those circumstances, you kind of have to go, man. I bet, I bet this thing keeps going. I bet. I mean, and it might not have the world. Sure. I mean, John MacArthur has got this voice that goes out to all sorts of people and everybody. And you know what? When he's not there, well, the church is not going to feel that. But the question is, is the church? Going to feel shepherded, right. cared right. for. Do they have yeah. systems in place? And right. maybe they, maybe the whole world stops watching. Like, how many people are tuning in to whoever replaced uh, John Piper? Uh, okay, now I think they might have had a switch. Now, I think, sure. I think the guy that replaced him isn't there now. Maybe well, some stumble. I don't know. And that's going to be a hard job, anyways. I mean, to replace a big guy like oh, you're that. You're coming in like on that. the heels of that. I, we're not a huge church, but you just took a sabbatical in January, and I spent the whole month going to every visitor. Hey, please come back. The main <laughs> guy's coming back. Like, don't <laughs> leave because I preach today. But, we, like, but that's not how it should be. I mean, no right. offense, but that's definitely not how it should be. It should be this church is about the message right. of Christ, right. and and it's not about our main guy. And this um, isn't a 21st century problem. I mean, this has happened throughout history, right? Oh, Apollos. Charles Spurgeon. No, I was going all the way back to New okay. Testament. <laughs> Apollos <laughs> well, is preaching yeah. in Corinth. Oh, I follow Apollos. I right. follow Paul. I mean, right. that's a whole conversation. Yeah. They're celebrity dudes. Paul's yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Right. <laughs> right? But this is a reality. And then you went to who? Spurgeon? So Spurgeon, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. How do you follow... How do you follow, how do you follow that, that guy? And he didn't start out in a huge church, but it ended up. It there. grows. It gr- and part of this is it grows around them in that ministry. Same with Martin Lloyd Jones. Yep. So. Oh, I, absolutely. Yeah, and that ebbed and flowed. That grew. It went down. It grew. And war and then, and, and then what's going on there now? And, right. I, and, and you make a really good point too. It's it's hard when it's you got to examine. Is it the pastor and built around the pastor and, and the type of pastor it is? Because we have such a diverse group of pastors. We have faithful pastors who have huge churches, and then we have pastors that aren't really teaching a faithful message necessarily. Who they have, have huge, huge followers, churches? Right? Yeah. Like, you know, it, when, when Joel Osteen retires, are they going to sell that you know event center back to somebody else? I can't imagine. You know who or who sells somebody pushes. else? And you know some of these television television guys aren't necessarily. I mean, I don't know. I'm not there. But I find it hard to believe that they're feeling 
people's needs throughout the week. The pastoral, and that, the pastoral shepherding. role, shepherd role throughout the week, or is it just the big show? Come and see, and then go on with your life, and we'll see you next Sunday. Right? Is there work going on during the week? I'd like to think that Kevin DeYoung is doing some work during the week with you it, know his elders. Kinda, so here's what I I don't know what the best plan is. I don't know if the if the pastor should just leave. And then they and they go in a totally new direction. I don't know if the pastor should stay, but let's take someone like like Mark Depp. Well, so all these guys we're talking about, as far as I'm aware, a lot of them. I mean, Kevin DeYoung made a change. He was at what university something or other Presbyterian. Right. Now he's at Covenant, Covenant, Extra Covenant Presbyterian. <laughs> I don't know. I yes. can't remember. But anyway, um, most of these guys have been in that same pastorate for a long time. Yeah. So it's a different story with the guys who bounce around. Sure. You got this guy, then you got this guy, and then those churches just hire another one of those guys and whatever. You know, and and it's funny, too, because I see guys do that, and it seems like that's how you climb the ladder of success and become, you know, get a huge church. But there's something to be said for these guys who are just faithful in the same spot. I heard, and I can't remember if, maybe it was at a conference, maybe it was in a podcast, I don't know. Maybe it was at the pastor's conference here when he was here. But uh, I, I remember hearing Mark Dever talk about when he came for his job kind of an interview, and they were looking at the call, he actually kind of had to train the staff yeah. to ha- what questions they should ask. You know, even if you don't select me, you guys need to be thinking about this and thinking about that, and, and the church I don't think was, you know, something big. And and, and, he, and well, so his faithfulness with the church mm-hmm. grew that ministry. And same for John MacArthur, same for John Piper. And Dever said, I've heard him say at a conference somewhere, of like he... Train that church has been actively working so that when he leaves, it keeps going. Yeah, I think his line is always like, I'm just setting it up for the next guy. Right. Like, I really want the next guy to do well. So, okay, so so maybe this is a strategy. Instead of just packing up and leaving, retiring, you stay for a season, for a while, but you're only the one preaching once a month. Uh, maybe it's not known when you're preaching. Maybe sure. it's and Maybe you, maybe, and I don't know if Piper did this. I don't know. You let go of the... The control. The this would be hard. Yeah. This would be really hard because you're watching this church that you've cared for and you've shepherded for a long time, yeah. and now all of a sudden maybe they're going a different direction. Maybe some things are happening, and you uh, you really have to be a solid, faithful guy to be okay with that. But then you're only there a little bit. If you're one of these big, if you're yeah. one of these big players, like if when I grow old and leave, I'm like, oh, they're so excited to have a new fresh, <laughs> fresh view. But <laughs> you know, do, do you have a plan? Do you have a plan for when you retire or what that's going to look like? Have you thought about that? I've thought so. So I've worked with with Mike right here, and he sure. was the the transitional guy here, and he was kind of transitioning through, and now he's uh, doing an interim pastor role. Yeah. And I thought how hard it must have been for him to watch things change. Yeah. Um, for him to watch the church grow. You know, for for my style to be different than his style, and I do commend him for he he helped with the transition tremendously. At the same time, I think, man, that must have been really hard. And maybe it would have been easier on some level if he had said, you know what, I'm going to just immediately go and do interim pastor work, and I'm over yeah. here. At the same time, there was so that that might have made some things easier. Sure, but it would have made other things harder. Right. Right. So and and nobody knows who me and Mike are. Like even right. in the church, so we're talking about small church coming out of COVID, merging right. two things. Sure. But if you're talking about five thousand people attending this church with the expectations of getting the teaching of John MacArthur, who steps into those shoes, what is this going to look like? That might be very different. Do you, do you think you could stay on at a church if some other guy came in behind you and started changing things or doing things different? You mean Would like that if, be hard for like you? if I were here, but then I came and changed everything, and I was the guy that I had to put up with? That would be tough. No, I I don't know. I I hope that I hope that God would grow me and equip me to be able to do that, but it would be really tough. Yeah. Um, because you you have a lot of ownership in this. You're shepherding people. You're caring for people. You're right. you're watching. But I think this is where the Bible has a good answer for this, like plurality of elders. Okay. Right. And we see sure. that when they gather the elders from Ephesus, and it's plural. And you see, there's there's a biblical argument for the plurality of elders. I'm not going to make that argument right now. But if you right. if you have a plurality of elders, and you actually are able to start allowing some of those other elders to really yeah. do more. Right, I'm thinking of another church uh, here in our area that has a, a guy that's probably coming, I don't know, five years into, three years, eight years, I don't know. He's coming up on retirement Okay. Um, and, at some point. And, and Gateway's D-Min program, Dr. Wilson, yeah. same, same sort of thing. And so what happens is you really build up those guys. Sure. You really pour into those guys. And so Dr. Wilson, I heard him say, he's doing ministry today 
that will have its greatest fruit 50 years from now. Wow. He's pouring into the guys who will be in his place someday. I didn't think about that. I thought the saying would be, I'm doing ministry today that's going to, you'll see it in 10 years. But no, it's still, these guys that he's training now still have to grow and mature. and Just lots. Wow. He's, so he's, he's working on ministry that will surpass his life. Interesting. Right? And so that takes a lot of, of personal awareness. That takes a lot of humility. Um, and and I don't know I don't know how well that's going for those guys, but I mean these guys are good guys. Yeah. But you also have to say, okay, what are the big things I'm going to work on? Right. I got and I'm equipping these guys to make the various necessary changes to do the things they need to do, opposed to do the things the way I did them. I've worked with I've worked with somebody, and it was you come along, you watch me do this, then when I'm out of here, you do it the way I did it. Well, I'm <laughs> right. not. What? Well, come on. That right. that's not really letting God use the gifts He gives different people right. to do things. So. Uh, you're asking me if I have a plan. I honestly, when I look at my retirement account right now, <laughs> and I think you're gonna work forever. So I need a. So I've, I've, I think I can live on this for a month. So <laughs> so it's a quick retirement. Short, it's a really short retirement. But okay. So the point though is I haven't thought a lot about it because I'm not. I'm an okay. I'm 47, but but I'm not so old as to right as to be. But I probably should start thinking about it. You know, at least sure. what's the way to do this. Right. And how do you do it healthy, right? So I think you've made some really great points. I mean, God raises up leaders. He takes leaders down. He's built, he's using these guys for a purpose. There's a reason we all know John MacArthur, Mark Devers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not, let's not just say that's a terrible thing. That's a good thing. Right. I mean, that's a good thing that lots of people are blessed. But the key is that you're faithful in those positions as God's using you in these other areas to also shepherd your flock well, have that plurality of elders. I like that point of like surrounding yourself with faithful guys so that if you get hit by a bus, airplane crash, retire, whatever, the church keeps going. I want to add one more thing, and and I don't know. Maybe I I haven't seen these big famous guys internally. You don't see the internal workings. I've seen... The situation that I've dealt with here with me and Mike, right. and I've watched the internal workings. I'm watching. I kind of have a little bit of a side seat from some friends and some places, you know, on this yeah. other church. Sure. A little inside view, just a little bit. And I think a really important, necessary part of this whole thing is that you keep the the health and the care of the church the primary thing. Yeah. So then it doesn't turn into well, who calls the shots, and the church starts all infighting and and. And, uh, I mean, I really do appreciate that between me and Mike is it was, okay, what's best for sure. the church? Yeah. What's really best for the church? And I think at some point it, 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 when he realized the transition was done, sure. he started helping other churches because he realized yeah. I don't need to be here. Right. And me being here, I mean, he was showing up and be like, who's this guy? And what's going on? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, and so now the church is, you know, it's, going. It, it's more than doubled the size when we merged. As far as the people, new yeah. people. And so most of those people don't know him. And right. and so now he's serving in a really good capacity and he's not... Helping another church. He's, yeah, he's helping you know? other churches, helping another church, pastoring there, entering. And he's allowing me more freedom. But earlier sure. on, he really need, for the good of the church, yeah. he really needed to be here. Yeah. You're right. Later on, yeah. possibly, I don't know, for the good of him, it was right. easier for him to go. Maybe for the good of... I think, he, I think it'd be fine if he was still there, but he still has gifts. He's got preaching gifts. He's got So now he's, he's using those things for the good of a different church. And I think him moving a little bit out of the way has made it easier for me in some ways. I think it's made it easier for him. Uh, He's not here to talk about that. But we kept it uh, from from the very beginning, the first conversations, it was what's good for this church. You know, what what is good for the church? And I I know uh, my friends, you know, where where one is retiring and another one's younger on the the team. I don't know if the younger is going to transition into that position. But I know the concerns are what is good for the church and I, I hopefully i have to imagine these guys we're talking about i don't know about all of them but the ones that are really biblical solid guys yeah. mark dever says it all the time i'm setting it up well for the next right. guy so he's thinking about the next guy and the health of the church and what's going to happen i don't know if the other guys are but i hope they are well and that's a really good point i mean i was kind of on the outside here kind of looking in with you and mike and i can say from my own perspective and watching the church react like it was good that mike stayed on he didn't just like leave yeah it was here through that transition and you could like it was kind of natural that oh if things are going now hey i'm gonna fade away now i remember when we first set up okay so we're merged we filled the paperwork out two yeah. churches have merged everybody voted all this stuff the first series, it was like every, he did one, I did one. He did sure. one, I did one. Like every other week, like yeah. like clockwork, right, in the yeah. first short series. And then the next short series, he was kind of pushing like, well, maybe you should do 
right. a little more, and you should do the intro to this, and you yeah. should set it because he was like kind of trying to set yeah. me up. And then I remember at one point uh, he was saying like, "No, the you are the lead pastor. The people need to see you." Is like, who's going right. to preach Easter, and what are we going right. to do for Christmas? Like all yeah. these big conversations. He really started yeah. saying, "No, you have to do this." Right. Right. And then pretty soon we got to a, like. Then pretty soon he wasn't. He wasn't preaching at all, which probably was really hard for him. Like yeah. on my sabbatical, you kind of feel this like, man, I'm not. Right. I got over that in my sabbatical. Yeah, the unction, I was back. Yeah, yeah, something's <laughs> happening, right? So, but I think, I think he knew that he could still use that elsewhere, but it yeah. wasn't good for him to use it here. So then right. he started doing all the pulpit supply work. Yeah. He he found this interim pastor position. He's like there for, I don't know, six months a year, whatever. Yeah. And and so he's able to use those gifts there because he knows if he really needed to use them here, it wouldn't be good for this church with you and me and, right. and you know, like all this stuff to do. It. So yeah. I think there's a sense that if you keep the health of the right. church in the forefront of your mind and you do what's very best for the church, I think that would would make the transition smoother. Yeah. You're right. Like, you don't yeah. want to see a bunch of infighting. And you don't no. Want to see, no. I mean, no. you don't want to see the church implode. And obviously, there probably are going to be disagreements. If, if somebody's coming in behind you, they're going to do things different than you. And oh, you're going to yeah. get irritated by that. Uh, you know? Could you imagine? But, could you imagine? I don't know. I mean, you, how hard would it be to come in and, and say, okay, I know I know John MacArthur. I know Pastor John yeah. was always doing this, but we're going to do that. Right. And everybody goes, oh, good idea. And, yeah. Ooh, that's or or the one. church grows after you leave, whatever. I think as we're talking through it, I feel like there's probably a thousand different ways to transition. I think the biggest takeaways for me from this conversation is is keeping the health of the church in mind and keeping mm-hmm. that center. And, and also that Dr. Wilson quote. You know, we should be doing ministry with the mindset of like our greatest ministry is going to be fifty years from now, and how do we set up those next? How guys? do we set up? And, and we, we take and care of the them. assumption we never said is this all has to be biblical. Sure, let's not do things outside right. of what the Bible says. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's probably the best way to think about it. Wow. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful for you. Maybe you have some thoughts on on transitions, or you've gone through this process. Or... Yeah. If you if you're a pastor and you've gone through it, saltybeliever.com. Yeah. com. We want to talk. Contact to you. us. Wait, we have form. an email. We do have an email. We have an email. Saltybeliever at gmail.com. Saltybeliever. Or is it Salty Believer unscripted? Ooh. We don't even know. Salty Believer. We just set the set up, right? So I think it's Salty Believer at gmail.com. Salty Believer at gmail.com. Try that out. If it doesn't work, go to saltybeliever.com, fill out the contact form, yes. and let us know that email doesn't work. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so, awesome. Until next time. Thank you for listening. Find more information at saltybeliever.com.